The concept of an atomic note may have been popularized by the Zettelkasten movement and other similar methodologies, but you don't have to follow any of those to recognize the value in the principle of atomicity. The idea that simplifying something down to its parts makes each of those parts more reusable in different contexts. In the tech industry, we have many different names for this. The one that I prefer is composable, because composable doesn't just mean that you can separate something into different parts. A composable system is one where every part has been chosen as the best for that job, and yet they can still play well together and come together as a whole. I like to think of my Obsidian Vault as a composable system. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create and maintain visuals along with your textual notes and be able to choose the best one for the job and have them make sense within your vaults. I'm still exploring different ways to add more visuals into my notes, but so far the best way that I've found is by using the Obsidian Excaladraw plugin. Here's why. Images in Obsidian have some disadvantages. For example, you can't tag them the way that you can with notes. You can't have front matter in them so they can't be queryable. Excaladraw changes that because an Excaladraw drawing can be converted into a markdown file. So it is just a plain text file, which means you can also tag it and link to it and put the front matter that you want. So it turns images into something that you can add metadata into. But Excaladraw isn't just for images. Because it is also a markdown file, you can add text either within the Excaladraw drawing or within the markdown file that it was converted from. And either way, you're going to be able to search that text as well. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. If you want to use Excaladraw too, then I do suggest that you also create a separate Excaladraw folder. That's so that you can have the same idea and have one under Excaladraw as a visual note and then have one outside that vault as a textual note. Let me show you what I mean. In Obsidian, if I open up my file explorer, I have a separate Excaladraw folder. I've got the scripts here, but I also have different files here. Now you'll notice some of them are PNGs and some of these are actually .excaladraw files. That's because Excaladraw lets you save files in three different formats. There's the .excaladraw file, which is a native file format for Excaladraw. You'll be able to open this type of file in Obsidian and change the drawings and transclude parts of it. We'll get to that later. And then there's SVG and there's PNG. SVG and PNG are both straight image files. SVG is going to be more manipulatable. So if you use some image editing software, you may want to keep them in SVG format so that you can change every part of it, like the colors and all that. But if you want to have something that's more portable, like if you're publishing online your notes like I do, then maybe something like a PNG would be better one. The drawback to the image file formats is that in Obsidian, you're not going to be able to edit them. So here's an example of a PNG and I can't change anything on it. But if I go to the Excaladraw version of it, then I can move things around however I want. So where does that leave you? I think for most people, the .excaladraw file format is going to be fine. You can put it to PNG if you're publishing, but the .excaladraw format is going to give you the most flexibility because you're going to be able to link to it just like you would any other Obsidian note. So in this case, I've got a file called Parallelism Batching. And if I had an Excaladraw drawing here with that name and also maybe a textual note with Parallelism Batching, then it can get a little bit confusing. So I like to separate all of the Excaladraw stuff into a different folder just so I can tell them apart more easily. Now I just opened up a visual note that I already had, but that's not where I start. I start by reading something and processing those highlights or those ideas into Obsidian. I want to show a real example here. So I'm going to pick up something that I learned from a brilliant lesson, and then I'm going to try to create two types of notes from it. One that is a normal text note and another that is a visual. Brilliant is the sponsor of this part of the video, but it's also pretty convenient for demos because each lesson is pretty short, bite-sized and well, composable. Brilliant is an online learning platform that is specifically geared towards the maths and sciences. So it makes it really close to my interest 
interests and my heart. This lesson about cryptocurrency talks about some of the key requirements for something to be considered a currency. And I think that those are really foundational ideas that I want to save. So I'm going to click on the Readwise Reader browser extension here so that I can start highlighting right from Brilliant and then I can also take notes. I don't always get a chance to use Brilliant every day, but I still find myself using it several times a week because it's infinitely more fun, but also more productive. To be learning something on the go rather than just mindlessly scrolling through a social media feed. Brilliant has a lot of different courses that are rotating in all the time, like this cryptocurrency one, and I think it's really tempting to try out new courses and to finish the existing ones. I also think that they do a really exceptional job at taking sometimes quite complex mathematical topics and distilling them down into simple, practical ideas. And I think it's work that should be supported. If you'd like to give Brilliant a go, then go to brilliant.org slash NicoleVDH to sign up for your free trial. And then if you'd like to continue, then the first 200 people that use that link will get a 20% off of the annual premium subscription. You'll be supporting a great company and by using my link, you'll be supporting me as well. So thank you for that. Now let's see what that brilliant note looks like in Obsidian. I'm going to open up that file, which is a brief history of currency. And here are the notes and highlights that I took. This part is a highlight and I've got a note here. There are only a few highlights here, so let's go ahead and process them. Even though this is about cryptocurrency, the first part is just about any currency in general. So I'm going to create a new file. That's Command N or Control N. And I'm just going to call it currency. In this note, I'm going to add references here and I'm going to add a link to that, a brief history of currency. So I know where I got those ideas from. And then I'm also going to hit command P to open up the command pane and do a search for Excalidra. In this case, I want to create a drawing in a pop-out window and embed it into the active document. So I'm going to select that and this is my Excalibur drawing, and I'm going to rename it to currency. Now there's no problem here with having it be the same name because in my Excalibur settings, I've got the default location for new drawing set to Excalibur. That's why it automatically goes into the Excalibur folder. And that's also how I can have the same name for different files. So back to the article here. This one is talking about bartering. I'm going to type out a rough paraphrase definition of currency is. So I have the definition of currency here. I think this is something that works better as text just because I'm more likely to use this in something else later. However, the rest of this article also talks about the requirements for currency. And I think that's what I want to turn into some sort of visual. So if I want a single drawing that has all of the requirements of currency, then the first one that I want to visualize is something about how good currency is essentially indistinguishable between different instances. Like money should be all the same. Every coin should be the same. Otherwise, it's not the same value. Now I could try to draw this, but since I'm not a great artist, I am just going to use other people's work legally, and I'm going to look for something about sand. Flat icon is one of my go-tos for looking for icons, but just be careful about the licenses. I'll actually take this one because it is a sand castle. So I copied that image. I'm just going to paste it there. Because I think it's interesting that even though the sand comes together in a different way and has a, a specific form that is distinguishable from others, every individual grain is still indistinguishable from the others. Then I'll just double click here, indistinguishable. Then another requirement is that they don't degrade over time. I think the hourglass would actually be quite good here. I'm going to choose this one. One of the cool things about flat icon is that I can also edit it. And because I've logged in now, I can choose my type of red and then I can download it as a PNG. And then here I can just move that over there. Of course, it's a little too big. So let's make that smaller. So I'm going to add this 
hourglass here and I'm going to double click here. So I'm going to put here durable because one of the reasons why sand is used for hourglasses is because it's durable. What else is there? They're rare enough that it takes a lot of work to find more. And this is one case where sand doesn't really work. I'm going to look for gold because that's why we started off with gold. I'll copy this, move it here, rare. And then common enough that it's possible to find more. So I want some sort of mining thing for this. Mining, like a quarry or yeah, like a pickaxe. I'll choose this, copy the image. I'll say mineable. And then amounts that people have would be easy to carry around. So I would want something like coins, gold coins in particular. Perfect. Portable. You don't want to bring the entire mine with you. Backed by governments. Easy to trust. So this is actually about trust and enforcement. Let's go to the noun project trust. Sometimes I like the noun project better, especially for, well, nouns. I like this as agreement. Okay, I'll choose this one, copy it, and then I'll paste it right here. Trusted. So now I've got these requirements of any currency. Currency must be indistinguishable from others of the same type of currency, must be durable. It has to be rare, but still mineable so you can find it. You should be able to bring it around and be portable and it should be trusted by all the parties. So I'm going to save this as a PNG into the vault as well. Now, when we go back to the currency note, you'll see that because I embedded it here, the image is showing up here. So I'm going to copy that and put it under requirements. Here are some requirements for something to be considered currency. Now this automatically is embedding the image, the PNG that went into my assets folder. So one cool thing about this currency drawing is that if I open up the backlinks for it here, I'll also see everywhere that I've linked to that from. So right now it's saying that in this text note for currency, I'm linking to the Excala draw drawing. And that's because I'm doing that here. So I can put it here, for example, so that right under the requirements section, I've got a nice drawing. Another cool thing though, is if let's say I wanted to search for a word on this, like let's look for mineable because maybe I don't think I've, I've written that anywhere else. I'm going to open up the search panel here and then I'll type mineable. It's finding other things like abominable and indomitable. But for just mineable, it's already finding that currency section. And that's because this drawing is also searchable. So any text that I've written in it is going to be searchable. So that's definitely an advantage. Then if I right click here and open this as markdown, then you'll see what it actually looks like as the markdown file. Here are the text elements, indistinguishable, durable, rare. And then there are the embedded files that I've got and this is some information for how to put the drawing together according to how I position those elements. You'll notice that there's also front matter here. So let's add more to this tag section. Let's say that this also has the brilliant tag because that's where I got it. And let's say that it has the type visual. If this were just an image, I wouldn't be able to put in this front matter. Let's go back and open it as an Excala draw drawing. And then I'll open up a new note to show you how I can search for it. So I'll leave it as untitled. I'm going to create a data view query and I want a table with the type where the type contains visual. Not only do I want it to be a visual, but I want it to be a visual with the tag brilliant. So let's see how that goes. And that currency file is coming up. This is a way to be able to query images. So when I click on it, it goes right back to that visual. Another thing that I can do is when I open this as markdown again, I can actually add hierarchies. So I can say, for example, that this is a parent of cryptocurrency. Now I don't have to put it in front matter. I can also just put it as comments here. So let me add comments and then type parent, and then I'll add the cryptocurrency link. 
this isn't a file that exists. But I still want to say that cryptocurrency is a child of the more general currency. Why does this matter? Well, now let's open up Excalibrain in a pop-out window. I've talked about Excalibrain before, but it is a way to visualize the relationships between your notes. And as we can see here, there's cryptocurrency, which is kind of shaded because even though I've linked to it from a few places, it doesn't exist. But currency does exist. This is the actual text file. So now I'm hovering over it and I can see its contents. But this is the drawing. If I'm confused about why there are two different types of currencies, I could also elect to have this appear differently in the Excalibrain settings as an Excalidraw drawing. Or I can also hold command while I'm hovering over it and I can see not just the name there, it says ExcaladrawCurrency.md and then it shows just the drawing that I have. And here it shows the text with the drawing embedded. So in this way, I've got in my Excalibrain some notes on currency that are textual and some that are visual. Just a note here to explain the differences between the .excaladraw and the .md. The thing is that the same file is a .excaladraw file when it's being treated as a drawing, and then it gets saved as a markdown file because then all of the textual elements from the Excaladraw drawing can be converted into a plain text format. This is really good from a future proofness perspective because anything that you type in the Excaladraw Excaladraw drawing will also be searchable in plain text, even if Excaladraw itself goes away. One thing about text is that you can embed parts of a note, parts of a textual note, within another note. So if I'm in this new untitled note here and I want to take something from the currency note, for example, what if I just want that initial paragraph, the definition of it? So I can hit enter here. And now I've embedded just that paragraph. With Excaladraw, you can do the same thing. You can embed parts of a drawing within other notes. So let's look at this drawing, for example. What if I just wanted to have this trusted part of this image? So I'd like to select this whole thing. I'm going to right click and use group selection, or there's also a keyboard shortcut there. And then within this menu, I'm going to select this one that looks like a link that is selected, so I'll click on that. And I want to call this trusted because that's probably what I would refer to it as, or I could have just left that blank. I'll hit OK, and it says link is ready and available on the clipboard, meaning I just need to paste it. So then back in my note here, I'm going to hit Command V or Control V, and this is going to link specifically to that part of the file. So when I click that, it's going to go directly to this part of the file. But I don't just want to link to it, let's say. If I want to embed it, then I can put an exclamation point here, and then I can type area equals. And now that is embedding just that part of this larger image. The cool thing is this isn't creating a new image. This is still just showing a smaller part of the larger image, but now it doesn't have the trusted text in it. So let me go back here and type group because remember I grouped it earlier and now I have that entire image grouping, the icon and the text as well. I don't think I'm ever going to be the kind of person that has 100% visual notes. If that's you though, go with the gods. Personally, I think I learn best when I have some images or visuals to describe core principles or ideas, and then I have text to explain the nuances. Plugins like Obsidian Excalibur and Excalibrain by the same developer, Zolt Vitsian, really help me treat my images like texts, which makes sense to a more textual person like me. So now I can have text and visuals. When I link to both of them, I see links and backlinks. I can embed both the entire visual or text note as well as parts of it. And then I can reuse those smaller parts within a larger, more composable system. If you'd like to know more about the basics of how to use Excaladra, then check out this video where I go over just that. Terry Makasi, thanks for watching.